John. Tom, in the interest of keeping this brief, I'm going to set the stage. I'm John Garris. Uh, I run the NASA Computer Crimes Division. We catch hackers. Over to you. Very good. My name is Barry Grundy. I'm a uh, assistant special agent in charge of the Treasury Department's uh, Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. In brief, because I know that's uh, not familiar to a lot of people, we o oversee uh, tax threats to tax administration internally and externally for the IRS. My name is Trent Tyma. I'm with the FBI. I run the uh, National Cyber Investigative Joint Task Force, and I want to thank you for the job security. <laughs> My name is Tom Talor. I'm a retired NASA executive. I built the original Computer Crimes Division at the NASA Inspector General's Office, and uh, I've been retired for about 10 years. I had 31 years in federal law enforcement. Good morning. I'm Colonel Mike Convertino with the U.S. Air Force. I'm commander of the 318th Information Operations Group. My group uh, performs uh, reverse engineering, malware analysis, intrusion detection, and, um, and also um, provides defensive mechanisms, custom government-only defensive mechanisms to, pr uh, to protect uh, U.S. Air Force and DOD networks. Mike, uh, before you pass it on, uh, are you recruiting this year? We are. Um, we have a large number of jobs that remain unfilled. Uh, we need good talent, um, and we don't really turn anybody away. Even even when people have maybe uh, stepped across the line, we redirect them to our. We don't turn anybody away who crosses the line. We yeah. have a special line for them. Well, yeah, <laughs> and that's uh, that's part of my deal too. I, I actually have no authority to arrest you, and I'm not interested in arresting you. <laughs> I'm here to recruit you, so. Come see me after. <laughs> oh, no. I'm Bob Hopper with the National White Collar Crime Center. Um, we teach state and local law enforcement uh, computer forensics. And as a side note, I've been coming here four years, so I usually fly in on Monday and we do this and fly out on. Saturday or Sunday. Um, I'm 32 years old. This, so this is what this will do to you. Uh, <laughs> loud, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Mitchell. I'm a civilian member with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, I help develop forensic software for our tech crime program. Okay. Uh, we need questions. This is, uh, this is all for you guys. So line up. Let's have some questions. Come on, come on. I've got another coming in. STS Endeavor Mission Metal. For someone who asked a good question, to be determined later, of course. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, I, heard, I just heard recently that the, the mastermind behind uh, the Mariposa botnet was just taken down. Do you guys have any information on that? Uh, yeah, the Slovenian police arrested them Tuesday. Um, uh, the Spanish police arrested a few other people, I think, early this summer, along with stuff that we did uh, domestically. Yeah, it just happened. Nobody's behind you. You got a second question? Go. Line up, guys, if you got questions. Do you folks communicate with each other on problems, issues? How the hell do you think they got here? <laughs> no, I mean at work. In other words, do you do, are there interagency connections between you guys for everything? Or is it just certain items? No, we don't talk to each other at all. <laughs> I've never met these people in my life. <laughs> yes, we do. We have, we, there, there are a lot of working groups and task forces that work on various uh, cybercrime issues in particular. Um, the IGs, the Treasury Inspector General and uh, for Tax Administration and the NASA IG, the smaller uh, computer crimes unit actually do rely on each other, on the FBI and some of the larger uh, agencies very much for intelligence and support in the field. So yes, there is a, there's a so lot of So does this carry to local areas? In other words, like sheriff's departments and police, you know, city police forces and actually, so Actually, yes, it does. And it's U.S.-wide then? Yes. Okay. Thank it's you. actually international, international, not just U.S. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you notice the Royal Canadian Mounted Police? They come from Canada. 
Damn. Hello. Um, how do you guys really feel about the Cyber Command, and why aren't they here today? Uh, no, Cyber Command's here. You just don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, um, the, the Air Force and every service has a component that it offers, uh, forces that it offers to Cyber Command. So when you say Cyber Command is not here, uh, I, I guess I'm effectively their representative. So if you have, have any questions, let me know. <laughs> you can probably spot 12 if you want. Um, like this field has been pioneered by people who have been breaking the law. Now, when I was like, you know, going through my training and all that, the message was that in order to stop this behavior, we have to stop hiring the uh, people who are violating the systems that we're building. Now, what I just heard is that, you know, you're looking for people and you're not too worried about the fact that lines have been crossed. Has is that a shift again in uh, the industry position? Well, I'm the one who said that, but I didn't mind people crossing the line. But uh, remember, these guys are law enforcement guys, so they do care if you cross the line. <laughs> um, but I'm not. Um, uh, what, I will ha what I will do is, e even after you've paid your debt to society, uh, <laughs> in terms of these guys, we, we kind of direct people to our support contractors. So people can do white world uh, research, unclassified research, on all, all sorts of malware. And, uh, and, and still contribute, you know, to, to the Air Force and the defense of the country. So. To, to be able to work uh, for any one of our agencies, you're going to probably have to get a clearance. And there'll be a background investigation. So if you have broken the law in probably the last five years, that will probably eliminate you for, for a period of time. If you've stayed clean for five years, you're probably going to be eligible for, and depending on how severe uh, a crime you committed so you know it's dependent and there has to be a period of time where you're 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 clean anybody else well yeah on that I mean if you're elite I want to talk to you I mean it doesn't matter and we may not be able to give you a TSSCI clearance but I still want to talk to you so. hi working in the uh, private space with consumer protection, with a lot of the threats that are out today, fake antivirus, phishing, things like that, it's been very hard to get law enforcement engagement for, you know, hey, somebody just lost 50 bucks over there, where at scale, it's billions of dollars, but it's just in all these little drips. What are your thoughts on how law enforcement can get a better handle on that, and how can private industry interface better with law enforcement to ultimately get prosecution? So, the National White Collar Crime Center and the FBI have a facility in West, by God, Virginia, called the Internet Crime Complaint Center. Um, and we take complaints online from victims, and we don't really care whether you, you lost five bucks or 500 bucks. Um, the FBI is, does a really, really good job of doing analysis on those cases and following up um, with those investigations that meet their threshold. What we do uh, with our analysts from our side of that is um, take those cases that don't meet the FBI threshold, uh, do some analysis on those cases, and hand those off with that analysis to both sides of the jurisdiction. So the jurisdiction that that's got the victim in the jurisdiction that's got the suspect, and we put those two investigations together. Um, Just we had a conversation about this yesterday about ISPs and <clears throat> uh, credit card companies and various other people that are involved in, in the fraud chain uh, retaining data, because what we find is that that person that lost $20 that normally wouldn't have their case investigated might be part of um, a fraud that, that's a million dollar fraud once you cobble all those cases together. So once they're aggregated and codified into one single investigation, that victim might actually get some satisfaction. So what you commonly hear is that person has reported a crime and they might not think it got investigated when in fact it did and the case was filed as a large fraud case. They just weren't uh, 
called to testify so they actually might not know that that the case i actually got investigated yet to piggyback on what hop was saying we we benefited from the i see triple uh triple c's work internet crime complaint center uh on a nigerian case where nasa was victimized but it wasn't quite at the level that uh was enticing to uh many u.s attorney's offices particularly in the larger jurisdictions like uh, washington dc new york we go there we found out that our guy was directly associated with uh, over $750,000 of lost complaints. And we know that's just a fraction of the damage that he's done. That tipped the scale and got people interested, and we ended up arresting him. And he spent a year and a half in Nigerian prison. I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good uh, outcome. So, so the complaint center, um, the number of complaints has just grown phenomenally over the last uh, three or four years. I think last year we we're bumping a million complaints a year. Uh, we also put in a, uh, we wrote a program that, uh, it's called ISIS, that uh, helps state and local law enforcement uh, with the analysis and cobbling together of those cases. It gives them the ability to communicate back and forth uh, from both sides of that, from the suspect side and the, and the victim side. Uh, and it's uh, it actually works pretty well and that was an excellent question and I will give you this pocket protector <laughs> knowing that you can put this on eBay and probably make as much as two dollars <laughs> hop, hop will even autograph that for you for, for you guys that are standing in the back there are seats up here in the front and we got your picture back there anyway, so you might as well come on up. All right, the next good question is the STS Endeavor Medal. It's for you, man. I can see it. Cybersecurity Act of 2009. I'd like to hear the panel's opinion and their position. <laughs> Could you repeat the question? <laughs> the Cybersecurity Act of 2009. Your position? You could just go for or against. Uh, we're law enforcement. We enforce the law. I mean, the Congress uh, did a great job making the yeah. law. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we gotta have jobs when we go home, you know. I was just wondering if the uh, the current position towards the uh, the classified networks. Do you think that it it actively does enough? Assuming that since it is a closed network that uh, security features don't need to be as strict or stigs don't need to be as enforced? I'm not sure I agree. Um, uh, Mike, you, you look like you're chomping there. So, um, I mean, the, your, your question is uh, a little nondescript, but okay. as, as far as... Um, Security, you're asking about security on our secured networks? Okay. Or classified networks? Well, we're not going to really talk about that too much. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, um, you know, I mean, certainly the posture on, on uh, secured networks is uh, at or above um, what you might expect to see on our, on our unclassified networks, just because of their criticality, um, the value of, of the information. And, uh, and the fact that, frankly, some of the information on those networks could get people killed if, if it was revealed. So it's, it's really important, um, you know, that we, we make sure those systems are protected as, as best we can. I mean, that's a pretty, you know, generic answer, but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious from that. This could be considered a follow-on. Uh, what's the latest excuse for the leakage of 96,000 classified documents from the secured network? I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. It just takes one stupid motherfucker. Yeah, that's, that's a human problem. One lion motherfucker with no...